All right, guys, it is uh, Sunday, November 26th. Um, I checked my email and I saw Trade the Matrix put out a new blog, blog post or a new article, whatever you want to call it. But his stuff is a must read. Uh, I, try, I try to read them as soon as I can. And uh, I'm, I'm making these podcasts to make it into audio. And I'll put it on the audio podcast as well as on YouTube, of course. But I like to listen to these as I'm walking to the grocery store or whatever all I got to do and um, to listen to Trade the Matrix take, you know, I, I think his takes are are freaking awesome, you know, so it's a uh, good stuff and someone needs to put it on audio and I'll do it. Why not? So, yeah, I do pay to have this audio put out. <laughs> so this is my generosity to you guys since I know. You know, so hopefully you guys get value from this and um, follow Trade the Matrix, man. So thanks, Trade the Matrix. And, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and read through the risk on and off analysis in markets. Uh, but before I get started, yeah, we just finished the um, Conscious Trading Academy Masterclass. It was freaking awesome. Uh, I encourage anyone to go check it out, ConsciousTradingAcademy.com. That's where I go. All the questions that I get. You know, uh, I'm I'm directing them now, and then go to go to the master class, and uh, sign up, and you can ask me anything, and I'll explain everything in depth. I'm an absolute open book, and uh, yeah, but I only do it in the master class now to go fully in depth and share everything I got to share is in there, and ideally, the when you know whoever is in the class writes down questions throughout the week that they have. And I can address them in the class in depth and break everything down in full detail. And uh, yeah, it's it's it was awesome. Right now we just had like over an hour and a half session. It was absolutely phenomenal. I I loved it. It was great. It's exactly what I pictured it being uh, when, when we when we started this thing. And um, on on top of that, I just came back from Cali, Colombia yesterday. Uh, quick trip in and out. And uh, two no, I spent two and a half day, days there. Um, over the long weekend on uh, Thanksgiving and tra trade on Friday from there. But anyways, um, and we have actually, I think the last day for the Friendly Bear Discord Cyber Monday deal is, uh, is tomorrow. Also Conscious Trading Academy, uh, there's a Cyber Monday deal also. Go check out the website, ConsciousTradingAcademy.com. And for the Discord, you can check Twitter or Reach out to Art of War for that. <clears throat> that is the lowest price it's ever going to be at. I'll tell you that. So a, a lot of people have signed up. And um, great. Yeah, take advantage because it, it's not going to be that low ever again. So anyways, let's get on to the Trade the Matrix um, article here. So Trade the Matrix by Jan. His name is Jan. I think he's French. Uh, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, risk on off analysis in markets. Risk profile analysis. Risk on, risk off. So okay, so he says that. Uh, so the 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 picture here is pointing towards risk off. So uh, on the on the chart. Anyways, uh, last thing I wanted to say was, yeah, I'm doing this because I like to. It makes me accountable to read it, and I get to read it several times. So like, I'm doing this. It's it's it benefits me the most. So yeah, all right. It is not like advertising for trade dimensions or whatever. I I like his stuff, and. I want I want to make sure I have the knowledge from whatever he's putting out before the market opens up on on Monday as part of my process to read what he puts out. So anyway, let's get back into it. One of the relatively hidden concepts in the in the retail industry of trading is a risk on off analysis or the term I often use risk profile analysis. In profile circles of investing and even mainstream media, the risk on off approach gets plenty of highlights. But in re retail circles, it is a nearly taboo subject. You have more chances of rando picking next 10x ticker than finding someone in retail who understands the subject. <clears throat> Many traders who trade SPY in large caps never bother looking into risk on, off, or what in particular drives equity markets on a daily basis. This is why so much attention is spent on pivots, levels, and trying to guess what SPY might or might not do. A very few bother studying the underlying mechanics of what drives prices of equities. It is very helpful to have a background of the move explained, even if it's only in hindsight. All asset classes are linked to each other 
more or less. And relationships as competition and competition is what drives the price moves on each asset class. This article intends to highlight some of those relationships on in relationships and what traders or any market participants should be looking for to protect project moves in markets better. I believe that part partially why this analysis gets a lack of interest is because many traders and young are many traders are young and it is not within their interest of people to study boring markets such as bonds or gold and the impact they might have on equity markets. Additionally, it isn't the easiest concept to grasp, especially one when one is younger due to certain world mechanics that are part of the risk on off approach. By world mechanics, I mean there is a lot that goes into it because those are the big asset classes, each with a lot of their unique action and functionality. However, luckily, there is a way to condense explanations down to the point where it can be quicker to apply, in my view, hence the outline here. One of the key benefits of using and doing risk profile analysis is to not overstay the cycles. Try not to try not to get bagged. To abandon the ship when the tide is turning clearly, or at least to reduce this as much as possible because we are still human and flop every now and then. What does risk on or risk off mean in simple terms? Risk on off. Think about it in terms of flight to safety or move into risk. For example, when things are good in the economy, people are seeking risk and higher returns. They put their capital into places that are riskier and can yield good rewards. Anything worth worthy of great reward reward typically will involve a good amount of risk. When things in, in the economy get worse, recessions, people become risk defensive. They might pull money from risky projects and park it in their bank accounts until the situation improves. It is the same way money flows in markets and how institutions think on a daily basis. The only difference between you as a consumer and an institutional investor is that the typical consumer makes risk on off moves only once or a few times a year. Meanwhile, institutional investors do the do those repositionings constantly on a daily or weekly basis, which explains constant push pull dynamics in markets. Big money is not static, and those that are eventually get flushed out in the major cycle changes. Risk on. The market seems riskier assets that have higher percent return potentials. Typically with, within equity space or emerging market currencies or other exotic instruments, small caps. Risk off. The market seeks safer assets that are have a low percent return potential, but at least do not have significant risk behind them. Because if the situation out there is problematic, one isn't looking for returns, but just to keep an eye on what they have. Or to use another analogy from poker, which many might be closer to risk on, is when you are participating, not folding, and adding bets because your cards are good and opponents are judged to be either a match or weaker. Risk off is when one folds because the cards are not optimal and is likely opponents hold a better hand. When you fold, you go back to the cash position, so to speak. Typical asset responses. Let us briefly cover relationship dynamics. Those are typical reactions for each of the class, depending on risk on, risk off is in play. We start with these basics when then build on top with bias. Risk on, SPY and equities higher. Bonds, TLTs higher, dollar lower. Bond yields lower. Risk off. SPY and equities lower, bonds, TLTs lower, dollar higher, bond yields higher. Gold and crude oil are not included in the above analysis because their reactions to risk on off are much less stable. They have more they have more variations. It requires more in-depth explanation to get to the this point across. So let's leave them out for now. For example, sometimes when risk on ignites, gold will perform well because how strongly the dollar has dropped which we can see in November. But sometimes risk on is present when while the dollar is flat or somewhat strong because you no know, strong which can make gold struggle, stay inside of range. This can create more confusing input into the analysis and requires more experience on the macro side to interpret their input. The same goes for crude oil. Economy news and risk on off correlation. An image here of bad news, good news. <clears throat> 
from an economic functionality perspective, risk off. When things worsen in the economy per news and data releases, the fund managers might be more eager to sell the equities. So they start to liquidate SPY or other large cap positions, leading to the decline of that asset class. At the same time, due to the worsening catalyst present in the economy, they might also sell some bonds, which lead to bond yields going higher. Yield is seeking bidders at higher prices. At the same time, some of those participants might move their liquidated cash position to actual cash position by converting or buying the USD. This leads to the USD strengthening in such situations of worsening economic performance and therefore a risk-off reaction. When asset managers and market participants become defensive due to worsening conditions, they might move some portion of their portfolio into cash and create bid on USD. Although the bid currency comes from multiple other sources at the same time, for sake of simplicity, let's keep it with only explanation above. Risk on. When things improve in the economy per news and data releases as new positive catalysts that shows economic improvement hits the market, the market might be more eager to bid on SPY and equities in general. When things are going well, many market participants seek start to seek and risk in higher returns because overall risk has decreased due to improving conditions. This leads SPY moving higher often in such cases. At the same time, bonds might also get bought from institutional investors, which pushes yields on bonds lower. Improving economic conditions mean that countries can borrow money at cheaper rates leading to yielding declines, declining. At the same time, dollar might get sold off because people and money managers are less interested in holding cash positions, being defensive and instead go into offensive mode seeking risk. Seeking risk means ex exiting ca cash, posi cash position and putting cash inside a risk pool, buying equities, crypto, real estate, and whatnot. This is very roughly the basics of relationship between those assets. Multi-frame analysis. He has an image here, four hour, 60 minute, 15 minute. One should always use two time frames to do the risk on off analysis. Using just a single time frame can quickly remove the context, especially on a more quiet and neutral days. It can also create too much whipsaw bias shifting if, if one is only looking at the broad market flows from a single time frame. It's always much more stabilizing to have two different time scales in mind. To see lower time frames should match the higher time frame. Personally, I use one minute charts combined with 15 minute charts to do a split analysis on each of and to see how one minute fits into the bigger picture of a 15 minute analysis, the idea is to establish two trend dynamics. Bigger picture money flows currently present, 15 minutes. Smaller term picture money flows current present, one minute. And then combining both, especially on neutral days, which is meant by that, which is meant by that is that when a short time frame, there is a strong ignition either on a positive or negative side, multiple time frame analysis is not as important because catalyst ignitions, which usually cause that, can actually change the big picture money flows from a short term perspective. What is meant by that for a conceptual example, 15 minute trend is in risk on for the past 10 days. One minute changes trend direction quickly and sharply on news catalysts into risk off. This then leads to a trend change that lasts for five days, changes higher, time frame. It started on short time frame ignition reversal. This is why tracking short time frame changes matters every now and then. To put above conceptual example into practical example, we can use number first risk, risk on ignition. We had for three weeks in October semi risk off environment, Middle East conflict as a main as a main cause of that, which then was reversed intraday on November first. And that trend reversal lasted for nearly, nearly an entire month of November. The point is that if one is only tracking higher time frames, you would not recognize that change until all the way in the middle of the month of November. You would have also missed almost 10 days of hot action because of not implementing both time frames at once. And he has an image here of all the time frames he's talking about. The conclusion is that low time frames bend to high time frames if we have more neutral-ish days, intradays, on low T TFs, TFs is time frames. Higher time frame flows will generally scoop up the smaller time frame deviations and turn them towards the flows of high time frames. However, 
When low time frames have strong surprise catalysts that can cause flows to not shift just a little bit instead of significantly, as we have seen above on November 1st. Significant tilt on short time frames can then start to chip away at high time frame flows and those turn and though and turn those flows completely. This is why both time frames need to be used. Double time frame use count the most on neutral days instead. For example, when one minute is relatively flat, no asset prices are moving anywhere much, gold flat, equities flat, dollar flat. On a day like that, it's very helpful to have in mind the big picture context, 15 minute time frame, to see what is to expect from the day like that and which direction one should stay with. For example, a 15 minute suggests that the market has been risk on mode for the past two weeks and the current one minute short term time frame is flat. This should give a, give a slightly more bias towards further bullish expectations. To put some combinations forward, roughly speaking, 15 minute time frame risk on plus one minute time frame risk minus on equals risk minus on with high score. I, I think I'm understanding this right. I don't know. 15 minute time frame risk on plus one minute time frame neutral flat equals risk on minus on with lower score. 15 minute time frame risk on plus one minute time frame risk off ignition neutral or risk off if flows kick in hard. Uh, yeah, w whatever, man. <laughs> whatever that means. Um, those scoring variations allow us to structure better plan each day. It's what to expect out of tickers. Rather than forcing some expectations, every day is better to follow institutional money flows, adjust based on how risk prone the money is at the moment. No matter what ticker you trade, it will be impacted by risk on off profile of broad markets. No asset is excluded, including the anarcho capital exotic island of crypto market. In fact, crypto even more because Bitcoin has very high sensitivity to global liquidity, more than many other asset classes. Trading view charts set up trading view. For anyone interested in using a very visual setup to the one shown in the image examples here. Feel free to use trading view and overlay the assets in a single chart window. It is more practical than having five separate chart windows is open to see all the assets and relationships and divergences are not as clear to say that to see that way. There are perhaps other charting platforms you can replicate the setup similarly. There is no promotional aspect for trading view whatsoever. It's just that they offer the biggest pool of assets and have a very flexible charts, very flexible charts for this particular task, overlaying tickers assets. I have tested multiple platforms, which often fall short in one way, in one or many other areas. The assets listed attached to one uh, on the chart should be SPY, SP500 as key equity index, US 10 year, 10 year bond, TLTs, USO five year, Yields, yield on fire bonds, gold, AAUUSD or gold, GLD or other tickers, crude oil, optional, dollar index, key currency index, VIX, optional. The reason why crude oil is optional is because the impact on risk on off from crude oil is often limited and confusing. While many would recommend adding commodity prices for risk on off analysis as they show the strength of demand within the economy and crude oil is underlying for many commodities due to the energy needed to extract them. The problem is lack of clarity in many situations, especially for non-seasoned market observers, at least from my observations. For seasoned market participants, it's perhaps more useful in, for someone less for which this article is made, it's perhaps better to avoid using it, and at least initially. Anyway, just a quick explanation on why crude oil is not used on my charts. That doesn't mean oil shouldn't be part of risk on off analysis. It just means it is a bit more confusing and difficult to interpret its impact on daily basis. Might work for a certain eye and might not for many others. The reason VIX is listed as optional is because it does not overlay with these assets well. Its volatility ratio is much bigger and it skews the chart of everything else it should if it is added the same window. Not sure if this applies 
to all platforms. I think the VIX should be part of risk on off analysis, but using separate charting windows, as I do as well. Each asset should have a unique color and be represented with a line chart. Candlestick charts are always superior to line charts, no matter what. However, sometimes one cannot use them for practical reasons. Underlay overlaying all of those assets with candlestick charts can make it harder to read and more confusing, which is why using the setup as outlined might be a better idea. The only ticker on the chart with actual candlestick action as is SPY, as you can see. And that is optional. It is not required. To overlay assets in trading view in such a manner, first select core asset and then click on plus to add all the rest of the assets in the same window. Relationships between the assets. Okay, got some images. Risk on off analysis is mostly about the relationships between key few global assets and how their movements impact other assets within completely different asset class groups. For example, the impact of gold price rally on stock prices, the impact of bond yields spiking on equity index, and impact of falling dollar on stock prices, etc. This is a unique, this is a technique that most institutional participants are thought first. This is a te technique that most retailers either never look at or do very, very late in their journey, five year plus. This article focuses on the resulting relationship outcome from the perspective of equity markets or specifically SPY itself. This is to simplify things and to make it more practical. But in the end, those relationships are not about equities themselves. One could take an approach in either direction. For example, how does a strong dollar impact bonds? How do weak bonds impact stocks? How do strong stocks impact gold, etc.? There are many variations depending on what asset one wants to find the resolution clue about. But as said, the focus of this article is specifically on equity prices, as in my estimation, that is what most traders are interested in, and so does the core of my daily activity in markets. The first thing we should establish is that markets are a constant flow of money back and forth from one asset class to another and then back again at some point. It's a never-ending reshuffling of capital into asset categories that might that make the most sense to be exposed to a particular moment. From the eyes of market participants, but that mostly institutional investors or market-making firms, since those are the ones that ignite the move to asset prices the most. Risk on off analysis, therefore, is where one is looking at where the institutions are currently pushing capital into or where they are pulling the capital out from. Into somewhere, out of somewhere. The relationship dynamic is the core of such analysis. I should point straight away that the point of this article is to summarize and put the method into practical implementation for those without significant research or market experience. However, that includes not covering all the basics of key asset classes that one needs to understand before this analysis starts to make sense. This means that for anyone taking this seriously, you should take some dive and research basics around asset, each asset class, equities, dollar, gold, bonds, etc. Because without covering foundations, it will be harder to interpret the moves on a daily basis. If you are serious about it, make sure you take one month, take a month and do some research into each asset class. The reason why this should be highlighted is that I know asset focused, asset racist, is that a term? Many race, many traders are. For risk on off, you must spread the wings and be open-minded and curious to check all of those places out. Stop guessing what moves the market and look at money flows of risk on off profile. This is just stupid. SPY was pumped to the point of high of day 451.42. There's clearly market manipulation going on, but it's not by the Fed this, is, this time. It's by fund managers and algos. That's a screenshot he put there. Combining the market outlook through key asset classes always leads to more clues rather than trying to make sense of one market class through the lens of that and only that asset class, which is always leaving you with blind spots. Why is SPY rallying? It has to be because crazy algos are buying it. This would be a common rationale of single asset focused traders. If you look and zoom out enough, you might notice the dollar has weakened and that market is bidding on many riskier assets 
at once while exiting cash positions or exiting safer assets, bonds, dollar, etc. And often that will lead to a much better clue than guessing the strange assumptions about irrational algos. More crazy assumptions are typically those who never bother seeking for proper in-depth explanations. As mentioned earlier in the article, one of the main, main reasons why so few traders apply this to their trading, which is highly useful to have explanations on why the moves in the markets happen the way they do, is because they have only an interest in a single asset niche. Risk on off is an inverse of that and requires one to venture with interest and curiosity into multiple assets. That does not mean one is trading all those assets to be completely clear. It means that one of the studies and researchers researches them so that relationship dynamics are clear. Even if one is only trading SPY or large caps, it's very useful to know that today might not be the day to go long based on how the risk on off flows are positioned and extract any of the suggestions made for SPY trading to be the same as for large caps because this is what this is all about trickle down effect of markets. Bonds, currency, equity, index, large cap stocks, small cap stocks. It starts with bonds and it ends with small caps. The entire chain of asset class you see that them listed above influences one another and the money flows that institutional capital is shifting from one place to another based on the change daily dynamics of markets. Do you have geographic geopolitical escalation in the Middle East? Full capital from small caps and low cap, low tier large caps and push into bonds or currency. Do you have a central bank analysing QE and lowering interest rates? Full capital from currency and push into large caps and then small cap stocks. That is very, very roughly how institutions reposition based on changing that daily dynamics using two opposite examples. First, risk off and then second, risk on. If there is a complete correlation to what is the use case of such method? Correlation coefficient, a statistical measure of the strength of relationship between the relative movements of two variables. By Investopedia, that's the quote. All right. Someone might say, but if the dollar goes down, which causes SGY to go higher, isn't this an inverse relationship? And if such relationship is highly co correlated, meaning that instantly the dollar plunges and the SGY response is exactly the inverse of that. What is the use case then? Keep in mind that 100% correlations within the same timing are not useful in markets because one asset is telling you the same story as the other asset, even if they are inverse of each other. Luckily, that is not the entire story, so let's break it down how one should think about it. Think of it as a supportive or unsupportive environment for stocks. Are we currently in an environment that is supportive or, or of higher prices and equities or not? But don't think about it in terms of correlation. Think about think also about long-term drag effect. What is meant by that? And if the dollar amount dollar is trending higher consistently by day, day by day, this is not that is not a very supportive environment for stocks. This means that is it possible that equities will struggle to make new highs or might be declining if dollar keeps ramping higher. Sometimes equities will go higher when the USD goes higher at the same time. But the drag effect of the strong dollar will eventually top out equities and send them lower. This is a drag effect, which is not necessarily one, one to one on inverse correlation. So always look for the perspective of a supportive or unsupportive environment, because that can lead to more realistic targets on where the equity should go next over midterm perspective. Let us outline this conceptual example. Risk on off analysis is not static. Be adaptive, adapt to win. It shows the chameleon, okay. If we lean on the point above, why should one think about constant flow of money in markets? Because risk on off analysis should not be used as a static method. It is highly dynamic, which requires constant adaptation and zero set and forget bias. The flows can change at any time. They can change in opposite directions completely, and sometimes when they do, the asset classes will begin trending for weeks in that newly established direction. This means that it is incompatible with thinking about this approach in static terms. Mostly, it's because of duration exposure differences. For example, sometimes risk on 
kicks in at last for three weeks, which gives one smooth trend to follow to trade large caps on long side, for example. In other cases, it will it only lasts for a few days before risk off kicks in again and inverses the flows because of these different durations of how long of how long those risk on off cycles last with significant differences in days of durations. One has to be dynamic about adjustments. This brings us to the point above on why using two time frames to establish bias as well. Different lengths and cycle durations. So to so the point about being dynamic with method is that sometimes the cycle lasts three days and sometimes for 30 days. This is a big difference, different, differentiation, differentiate, differentiation in exposure length between three and 30, which requires us to expect any duration. Hence, being sensitive to short-term changes is ideal because one does, doesn't know if this newly established cycle is going to last shortly and require one to adjust again with new bias, or if it will establish a long-lasting cycle, which makes for a good trend extraction plays without worrying about short-term changes too much. It could either be, it could be either or, and you don't know which one exactly the market has for you upcoming. By st static analysis, I mean, for example, that some traders make an analysis one month in advance for a particular stock, and then they stick to that and, they, and make trading plans around it. In risk on off, no plan should ever be considered a long term one month plan in advance unless one knows well that they, what they are doing. It is healthier to be as adaptive as possible and to adjust to the flows of the changes daily. Not weekly, not monthly, but daily or even perhaps hourly. That ensures the lowest chance of getting bagged and overstaying positions. Do you know why so many traders get bagged in top of cycles? because they do not pay attention to change dynamics on risk on off sentiment. Overstaying is likely if you don't pay attention to this. Example on image below is very short lasting risk on cycle. Those cycles happen from time to time. It is fallacy to believe that each time new risk on off cycle ignites that it can last two for a month or two in more than half of the cases it ends much sooner. And he has an image here of uh, the cycles he's talking about. And to have counterpoints to example, longer lasting risk on cycle, for example. Another chart. The above two examples should give you a firm conclusion on why adaptation to those flows is, re is required and why being nimble on a daily basis is a good thing. Keep in mind, however, also a statistical favor that it is not highly likely that within the single intraday session flows would go strongly from risk off to risk on. It is also not very likely that on any random day, you would see flows shifting from risk off to risk on without the support of a major catalyst. This means that if flows are to inverse strongly, it's highly likely it happens on, this, on the day of some major catalyst. CPI report, FOMC meeting, central bank monetary policy changes, and similar high impact economic news. Should one pay attention to the news and how the market reacts to it? Of course. Again, it's not that your interpretation of the news that matters, it's the market interpretation that money flow and what it does to potentially change the risk on off sentiment. Your task is not to question the market's reaction, which is what many pundits in the markets do. As a trader, your task is to follow the newly established direction of money flows until it lasts. Before you question the flows, trust them. Image here, skepticism, a tool to not get fooled. Gullible, wants to believe, low standard of evidence, result, overconfident, but fooled. Skeptical, believes with evidence. Strength of belief depends on strength of evidence. And denial, refuses to believe, impossible standard of evidence, result, overconfident, but fooled. Great. All right, this is a nice image here. There are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe what isn't true. The other is to refuse to believe what is true. Soren Kierkegaard. Kierkegaard. <laughs> okay. I'm guessing he's, I don't know, Swedish or something. Um, remember that academics can afford to always be skeptical and doubt every move of a market. As a, 
practitioner, trader, or investor, you cannot operate like that. So before you question things, trust the flow. Questioning the flows is actually a very advanced concept and takes a significantly experienced person to do it well. Most that question it will get it wrong, get it on the wrong side of the market for a prolonged period of time, which is as a trader you cannot afford. How often to check on the flows? My approach is to do a three to do three checks across each day and reassessing the flows. One is pre-market, one around the market open, and another one in the middle of the day. Sometimes that schedule changes if there is an important news catalyst. But typically, that routine stays the same. You don't have to spend much time on top of that once you are familiar with the concept. It takes a small amount of daily input on track and then and the return on the understanding. Where the money flows are going on a daily basis, it has significant advantages. No matter what asset class one is trading, low time consumption, except the time invested into learning about the method and high value output for bias and formation. On a typical day, it takes about five minutes in total to assess the flows. Don't try to interpret the news unless you know what you are doing well. Interpret the money flows instead. Many times in markets, it is difficult to figure out what the catalyst means and whether the market should take it as a positive or negative. Many times, what seems to be a positive catalyst ends up being a negative reaction in markets for many reasons. Risk on off analysis helps the trader to figure out not what the interpretation of the catalyst is, but to figure out what the market, mostly institutions, is doing with their capital and release of catalysts. Are they bidding on it or selling on it? Or are they bidding on it or selling it? This makes it much more practical for traders to figure out what the key market participants, biggest ones, think and which direction might be the one to play in. Not using risk on off around the key news events is definitely trading with at least third or less open eyed vision that one needs in markets. For example, it is very common that the Fed minutes traders try to read every article or read every comment from the Fed chairman and try to interpret what this should mean in, in the for the market direction next. Only few retail participants check all key assets, USD, SPY, gold, bonds. To make up the view of how biggest market participants interpreted the news, which is the most important thing. Your interpretation of the catalyst is why is is always lesser than one of the biggest market participants. Those that shape risk on off flows in ignition phases, so traders and investors spend way too much time on interpretations of catalysts and too little on interpreting market action and how they bind to risk on off. This leads to subjective opinions at too high a rate. Money flow interpretations are far more strict and direct with less subjectivity, which is exactly what you want as a market participant. To validate a point above, let's use an example of US CPI news released on November 14th. Inflation, this is a screenshot from CNBC. Inflation was flat in October from prior month, core CPI hits two year low. The consumer price index was flat in October from previous month, but increased 3.2 from a year ago. Bo both were below Wall Street, dot, dot, dot. Okay, then an image here of the SPY Trust Series ETF is SPY. As we can see, the market reaction was significant to the catalyst, even though even though on face value, the catalyst is very weak, slightly positive because the inflation came lower than expected, which an era of elevated inflation is good news. However, it was only a slight beat over expectations. All might assume that this type of news can only deliver a very soft and small positive reaction. Yet it was completely the opposite. This catalyst delivered the strongest risk on reaction in almost an entire year. Now think about it. There have been much more bullish catalysts over the year of 2023 that would justify much more moves, much, much, no, would justify more such moves as we got on November the 14th. Sure, a few, if not more, but that is not the point. Trust the money flows if you are trading markets on a short-term basis before you start to, to question the, the validity of the news. This especially is true for anyone trading short term, which assumes most readers will be. As one can see from the chart above of SPY market, it went into significant risk on mode with solid uptrend on equities. 
Risk on off analysis is how one survives in markets. Experienced market participants still get in trouble because of not understanding the risk profile analysis once their favorable market conditions shift. Okay, typical traders who are ignoring this concept in markets and are fully single asset focused will eventually land in a market where two to three more years markets become dominated by major changes in risk on off flows. And when it starts to happen, it usually takes a long time for people to figure out what is going on, mainly because of the lack of understanding on risk profile analysis and because they are so much single asset focused. Especially small cap equities and crypto fellas tend to fit that most. If I am a crypto anarcho capitalist or small cap moon pumper, surely I don't have to pay attention to risk on off flows. Well, it turns out you do not have to. You do have to. The amount and quality of opportunities are highly correlated to market global market liquidity, and global market liquidity is derived and ignited from risk on off changes. To put it this way, using two different years, 2020, the amount of high quality long opportunities in both small cap and crypto was highly correlated to the major risk on flows ignition in late 2020. If you ever wonder why there was such a rush in both of these markets that year, it is due to that. 2022, the situation was upside risk, upside down. Risk off began, began on the number of quality opportunities shrank significantly, making it more difficult for everyone. In each case, risk on ignitions were noticeable early if one knew what to track. So this isn't about hindsight analysis. We don't need to go beyond those two years as clear pro contra examples of how just of how important that this is. Both years outlined in high time frame risk on off assessment. And he has an image here, a bunch of stuff. Don't half ask risk profile analysis just by watching SPY. Highly common and sloppy. And he has a meme. Never have asked two things. Whole ass one thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, if you only watch SPY and nothing but SPY besides a bunch of large caps that you might trade, then how do you explain yourself when SPY just rallied 5% in a short amount of time without looking at the whole capital risk redistribu redistrib redistribution game on risk on off flows? This is why such ridiculous statements in social media often come up. SPY algos are crazy buying for no reason. SPY just moved way too much on weak news, etc. That kind of statement typically shows that people do not pay attention to global asset classes as a whole. To understand why certain moves in the market are happening the way they do. Remember that when that your asset class of focus does not provide always the answer of what's going on in markets or what the biggest stories are. are. <clears throat> Often those things happen outside of your focus niche. And many times it is very valuable to know. <clears throat> to know why and what is happening. Uh, just some coffee. As will eventually impact risk profile for global liquidity. Many times SPY, SPY will rally big time. And it's not because someone just turns algos up randomly but because key institutions started to push capital into in all risk on assets at the same time it is not spy only that is moving but the entire chain of risk on assets which then feeds onto the s move of spy tick by tick one tick up on bonds leads to one tick up on spy leads to one tick up on the russell 2000 and then tick by tick asset classes influences one another assets are priced on with a tick by tick basis within the context of what other assets are doing. Always remember that. Uh, excellent point, guys. Oh, man. This is why they say riding tide lifts all boats. That's why when the market is overall up, um, you can expect stocks to be strong. Uh, yeah, this is great. Uh, the past few minutes have summed up. He broke it down. You know, I was taught in trading, riding tide lifts all boats, you know, but like, Oh, it was never broken down the way Trade the Matrix just broke this down. Yeah, what what a freaking that, that was sick. Okay, um, risk on November. Do you think it's random that small caps had a large amount of multi-day runners in November and a relatively good amount of action? At the same time as all coins with the crypto space ignited too. 
and not to mention even OTC stocks started to move in November after being in total hibernation for months, if not years. Random, no. Risk on and strong, and a strong one explains it. So no matter what asset class you have selected, you have been impacted by behavior change. Charts below to a single to highlight point above. Risk on November from perspective of big markets. Risk on November from perspective of small cap, multi-day runner ignition. Risk on November for, from perspective of big crypto altcoins. Here's the images. If you, do, if you do track multiple market asset classes, one can build stronger view on what's happening and why and always be more inclined with reality to those who focus only on single asset class at all times. However, it does take some time to study each asset class, at least on the basics before it can be implemented into risk profile analysis. Well, the reasons why outlining survival aspect of this analysis is because if one has to speculate why things are moving the way they are without understanding money flows, that will eventually lead to troubles because it opens up too big room of self-interpretation and subjectivity. Risk on off explains what the big guys in the markets are doing, where those greenbacks are flowing towards. You can't see in their head of those large participants and their participants, but you can see into their wallet because the wallet is speaking with the way assets are getting a bid. Volatility matters. Image here, volatility. How much an investment zigzags in price? Why important? Higher volatility, higher risk, higher return potentials. Lower volatility, lower risk, lower return potential. How they continue? Bonds, cash savings, stocks, crypto. Okay. Anyway, yeah, go see that image. Um, it's... It is not just about the directional moves that matter, but the scale of the volatility that adds to the score risk on off analysis. High volatile moves of X assets, let's say dollar, add more to the score of risk on off flows than low volatile move does. For example, move upwards in bonds, bond yields could be seen as bearish, but it depends on what magnitude. A high volatile move using the past 30 days as context, is much more bearish than a low volatile move. This is why one should always have the context of the move in mind to see what kind of contribution it has to the entire bias. So always have the 30-day and 5-day context in your mind to understand what kind of magnitude of change in current assets you are observing. Relative volatility to the current change of volatility is what matters. The general rule is that the more volatile the moves and more clearly aligned in the same direction, the better. For example, the ideal risk on ignition versus version is strongest move in the dollar to the downside the past 30 days, strongest move to the bond yield on the downside the past 30 days, strongest move in the SPY to the upside in the past 30 days. If all the above happens at the same time, that is a high volatility move and all aligned on the risk on all assets to create the same direction, which is ideal as it does not, as it doesn't leave us confused. Sometimes the movements will not be as clean as one asset will divert in a different direction for multiple hidden or obvious reasons. For example, more confusing risk on situation, less ideal, dollar lower, bonds yields lower, SPY flat or lower. The above would be seen as a would be an example of much of a more mixed situation where one or more asset classes do not agree with risk on, especially if the volatility of each asset moves is not big. It's best to be careful about making any firm conclusions in such case. In some cycles, all assets will agree firmly, which is more often than not, but sometimes there will be more confusing mixture. To use the example of, no, on, of November and context of volatility and why that was such a strong risk of ignition, on ignition from perspective of bond yields. Okay, another chart. Parity of asset classes. Important point to establish which of those asset classes is, much, is most important or contributes to risk on off analysis the most. The answer is not static. However, there are certain dynamics that can use, that usually take place, but sometimes priorities change. It depends on the situation. Overall, we could say, and from a personal view, that is what some somewhat equal, but on some days there is one asset that will take a higher lead. This requires a very long explanation to get it right. 
So just take it as a starting point to consider all key assets listed on article as, as equal. They are not always equal as said, but to explain those situations historically, well, it is the whole another article in itself. For the starting point, it is good balance. It's a good balance to put input to each asset class into risk on off analysis as balanced with equal weight. If one has five assets in total, then each represents 20% of the total view. In other words, the meaningfulness of the bond move is equal to SPY. As said, if we were to dig into details, it's not that simple. But roughly speaking, it's a good, good starting point to use on a daily basis and then recalibrate better with more experience. Some examples of risk on off ignitions on ignition day. Risk off examples that establish solid intraday reaction with follow up over the next few days. Another chart. Risk off example of established solid intraday follow up over the next few days. Wrong notation on chart. Another example, risk on example, risk on example. Okay. Many of the above ignitions are the catalyst days of major news releases, but not all. Because there is so much news on a daily basis hitting the markets, it can get very confusing tracking everything and trying to interpret which news article might matter and which might not, and the market will ignore it. It is far better to just focus on risk profile analysis and then check when flows react strongly. You will know which news even events the market will be sensitive, have a sensitive reaction to. And it's likely that the catalyst will impact the market going further. Too many news releases just get ignored by market short term, no market reaction, and can quickly clog market participants with too much noise. Using risk on off is a filter that helps you with that to isolate news that matter the most. This makes prioritization of risk profile first and news interpretation second, especially since interpreting news is much more difficult when much more difficult often than it is to interpret what the big money is doing and where the flows are going. Asset responding will tell the story. Damn, okay, long article. Uh, conclusion, we have highlighted some of the relationships between key assets and how to practically implement them into daily analysis. What, the ar what this article does not cover is the basic about what each of those asset classes represents. What is, what is its function? why the global economy needs them, and so forth. It is expected of the reader that this is studied to make sense of things said above. For example, why are rising yields bad for the economy and the performance of equities? Why is the rising dollar not equal to equities or commodities, and how does that might translate into SPY, and so forth? It is required to study each asset class on its own, cover some ground, and then risk profile analysis will make much more sense. But buckle your seatbelt because it isn't a quick task, especially if you are new to this. As mentioned in the article above, if one is serious about surviving in the market, it is required to study those assets and how they tie into global market flows. This analysis is what makes defensive, makes one defensive when it's time to be defensive because the market just went into risk off. And it's it's this analysis that gives one conviction to step up the risk exposure when risk on kicks in by placing much more uh by placing more long trades and being more patient aka greedy for larger moves source material to study the basics of each asset class is not listed because there is plenty of free material about this everywhere if you focus study into each asset class on its own just make sure you do not pick subjective opinions when you study pick sources of those who strictly talk about the functionality of each asset class rather than what the assets are supposed to do economic books macroeconomy tend to cover this quite well. You might, you can grab uh, a bunch in your local library possibly. You read on risk profile analysis needs to be built on top of objective info, not subjective views. So focus on functionality when it comes to basics. And that sums it up. Trade the matrix. Uh, anyways, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I'm just getting started. So uh, I'll see you guys later.